now look to Miriam Feldman, the Director of Operations at the Oxford Union, to open the case for the opposition. Thank you, Madam President, for inviting me to participate in tonight's debate. It is an honor to be in this historic chamber and alongside such a thoughtful and engaged group of speakers. I will not be making a nostalgic case here tonight, hearkening back to some golden age of perfectly enforced gender stereotypes. The opposition to this motion should be contemporary and it should be inclusive. The issue isn't tackling this apparently inherent toxicity within traditional masculinity, but understanding that it isn't inherent at all. I oppose tonight's motion on three grounds. First, that the characteristics of masculinity itself are not inherently toxic, if taken on their own terms. The so-called toxic elements of gender roles lie in their unnecessary policing, and a lack of flexibility for those expected to conform to them. Secondly, that masculine traits and gender expressions, if embraced and used thoughtfully, can create solidarity around the men's causes that require our immediate attention and action, from mental health to cancers that disproportionately affect men. And finally, a productive understanding of traditional masculinity allows anyone, regardless of race, sexuality, or other identity, to access those pieces of it which empower them. Before I continue, it is my pleasure to introduce the proposition speakers in tonight's debate. You have just heard from Varuna Mitra, a first-year law student at St. John's College and the women's officer on the Oxford Union Committee this term. A surprising job for someone who, as I heard through the committee grapevine recently, can't believe she has to be woke in tonight's <laughs> debate. <laughs> Next is Wade Davis, an athlete turned advocate and educator whose illustrious sporting career included a stint at the top football club in Barcelona, which is, of course, the NFL Europe Barcelona Dragons. <laughs> Closing the case for the proposition is Leila Burleson, a former executive editor at Playboy and accomplished journalist at Refinery29 and Nylon, whose website boasts such hard-hitting titles as Leave Yeezus Alone, Why Fashion is Mean to Kanye, and, quote, How Kylie Jenner Helped Solve My Depression. <laughs> Madam President, these are your speakers, and they are most welcome. In order to decide whether to reject traditional masculinity, we first contend with how exactly we should define the concept as a set of characteristics and behaviors and who can claim ownership of it. Common masculine ideals, including social respect, physical strength, adventure, risk, and achievement seem at least value neutral, if not positive. The proposition may rightly point out, though, that falling short of these ideals or expressing them in a different fashion than one's peer set may inspire insecurity, which can prompt men to use force in order to be seen as dominant or to feel in control. These noble ideals may turn problematic when unattainable standards are set or when they are imposed uniformly without giving space for self-exploration. But this does not stem from the masculine ideals themselves. Nothing toxic resides inherently in a desire for social respect or physical strength or adventure. Rather, as sociologist Raywin Connell points out, it comes from men's social and political settings, which set them up for inner conflicts over these societal expectations. But understanding the negative effects of restrictive gender roles does not require us to reject traditionally masculine ideals. For those who see masculine expression as a component of their sense of self, traditional masculinity can bring them together for positive change. Solidarity and community are powerful drivers of collective action. Take the Movember Foundation, the world's largest men's health organization, whose brand centers on the mustache, an outward expression that is certainly an attribute 
regarded as characteristic of men. Their promotional materials lean heavily on traditionally masculine imagery, barber shops, boxing rings, car mechanics. The Movember Foundation embraces these points of commonality rather than rejecting them in order to bring about real change and awareness of some of the biggest issues in men's health today, prostate and testicular cancer, mental health, and suicide prevention. This type of action is certainly needed if we want men and boys to live happy and healthy lives. Driven by men and for men who know their health and issues best, this is an excellent example of the way in which traditional masculinity can be leveraged to bring about progress. In the Foundation's own words, we are strongest when we stay true to who we are. Being reasonable about the ways we encourage men and boys to express their traditional masculinity is only half the battle. For traditional masculinity to occupy a healthy place in today's society, we must take an inclusive view to who we support in expressing these traits and pursuing these ideals. While it may come more naturally to laud white men for these characteristics, men of color who desire similar physical strength or risk-taking may be regarded as dangerous, as seen in the myriad cases of police brutality in the United States. And women who exhibit traditional masculinity may be dismissed as overbearing or unlikable. We should not assign different value to different people's expressions of traditional masculinity. Being forced to conform to a set of expectations is uncomfortable and even dangerous. We should allow people to access the gender expressions that make them feel like their truest self. It seems misguided, then, to narrow this field of available identities and traits by rejecting those which we call traditional masculinity. If we embrace self-determination and exploration along with traditional masculinity, we give men and boys common ground to organize around issues that affect their well-being. We welcome and empower assertive, competitive people of all identities. And we see all gender expression as valid and valuable, from the most traditionally feminine to the most traditionally masculine. As you leave the chamber tonight, I urge you to join me in voting for the opposition. Thank you.